Well, I'm Jimmy Steinfeld, obviously, and um, I'm very honored to be here today. I'm a graduate of San Diego State University, and I studied uh, business management, as you were told. Um, so how did I end up being, becoming a rock and roll photographer? Well, photography was a hobby of mine. I'm sure everyone in this room has hobbies that uh, you love to do and maybe have nothing to do with your major, and uh, maybe they'll play an important part in your life in the future. Uh, so let me tell you a little about, about how I went from being a business graduate to be, uh, becoming a photographer in rock and roll. And San Diego had a lot to do with it. Um, uh, we heard about my first uh, camera, which is a, was a Minolta film camera. And uh, how many people in this room have shot with a film camera in their life? Raise your hands. Everyone, put your hands up. Okay, <laughs> okay, very good. Um, how many have shot black and white film? Raise your hands up. Okay, wonderful. And of course, that's how I started. I moved to color film very quickly, and I really have mostly shot color film my whole career because I became, well, really a photojournalist, and the magazines pretty much required a color photography. I have done a lot of black and white photography and still do, uh, sort of for my own uh, enjoyment and for uh, art projects. Um, you know what I will do before I forget? I'm going to give each of you a card, so if you want to go to my website on your own later, you can. Um, why don't I get, here, we'll just uh, start these right here. Pass them down the line. Please tell me if we run out because I have some more. Um, and uh, feel free to email me that you love this class or you hated this lecture or whatever because I'd love to hear what you really uh, thought about it. Um, the very first uh, magazine that I ever contributed to, you heard, was Spin Magazine. A Spin Magazine recently went from a printed edition to um, a uh, just online. I started in their very first year. They came out to compete with Rolling Stone, and they uh, competed to some extent for, for about a quarter of a century. And you know, it's just so competitive now; it's tough to to stay in printed editions. Very expensive, uh, and to nationally distribute such a magazine, and it still exists. Uh, my very first picture in Spin Magazine is in my book, Rock and Roll Lens. Um, and it's, I'll show it to you. Oh, we'll, we'll maybe look at it up here a little bit later. It's uh, George Throwgood. And uh, he's a blues rock guitar player and singer. I'm sure some of you know about him. Um, and then that same year, after I got published in Spin, which was new, and at that time I was kind of new to doing rock and roll photography, that gave me uh, the guts to call Rolling Stone. Uh, previous to that, I was kind of frightened to call the big, the big magazine. But that gave me, because then I could tell them, hey, I've been published in your new competitor. And uh, so I called them, and they said, well, uh, Mr. Steinfeld, please send us your portfolio. Where well, I was so new to a photography of concerts, I didn't even have a portfolio. And I told them, I said, I just have some 8x10s. And they said, well, send us whatever you got. So I threw a bunch of 8x10s in an envelope, sent it to Rolling Stone, and within a month, my picture of Madonna from her first concert. Or I should say her first tour, um, was in Rolling Stone. And that really helped my career quite a bit. That picture's in my book, and we'll, we'll look at it here, too. Um, so that's a very good thing. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to talk about it uh, at length a little bit later, about how you can get your pictures, whether you're an amateur or semi-professional, or you want to be a professional photographer, how really anybody, especially today, uh, with the internet can uh, get their photographs published and seen by others and see your name mm -hmm. right underneath your photograph and maybe even earn some money. Uh, I will be talking also today about uh, if you want to pursue photography very seriously as a career, um, I'm going to give you a lot of uh, hopefully useful information on, on how to make a living at it. And uh, I'll tell you that anything that you do in the uh, it's called the arts, photography, uh, performing, and uh, anything in the arts. It's, it's a challenge. It's a big challenge to, to make a living, but um, it certainly can be done. And I'm going to give you some pointers on, on how to do that. What I'd like to 
do now is, I know that in a lot of uh, lectures, seminars, uh, I do things a little unorthodox. I want to ask some questions at the beginning of the class instead of at the end. And we have a pretty large class here, but um, I think we can go through that real quickly. And I think I'll learn something and you'll learn something uh, if we do just a little bit of that. Uh, I would like, very briefly, if everybody could just stand up and say their name and tell me who their favorite band or musician is. And uh, we'll start here. Uh, Robbie and the Beatles. <laughs> My name's David. Uh, I don't really have a favorite. I say I like old school hip hop, like B, too far. Okay, good. Yuki, TA in this class. And then we'll go here. And man, what you know? Jimi Hendrix. It's got to be Jimi Hendrix. It's got a Jimi Hendrix. Uh, I also listen to a lot of like hip hop, underground hip hop. I would say like atmosphere, or, like poets, poetry. Okay. Can you? What's your name? Oh, the hand stand up. Juan. Yeah, if you would. Juan. Okay. And on down the line. Yeah. Oh, I'm Katarina. I'm from Germany. And my favorite band uh, I saw on the concert this week was Passenger. From the UK. Oh, I don't know about them. I'm going to have to pay attention. I'm Andy, my favorite band. I'm not really entirely sure. Too many to like, but right now I'm on a Colt Ford kick. So, that's good. I'm Lamiana. My favorite band are lots of different bands. David, my favorite current band is Spoon. photography, studio photography, location photography, 
obviously the, the concert photography that I do. And um, uh, so we can uh, think about that. The studio's up uh, in the Hollywood Hills. It's the old Star Wars estate. Mm -hmm. It's funny, when I uh, first moved to Los Angeles, I had, um, I've had three studios in Los Angeles. And I think you'll find if you pursue the arts, it's very common to go through many studios, sometimes because of financial reasons, and sometimes for other reasons. Um, and my very first studio uh, in Los Angeles was in Culver City. Has anybody here, you guys heard of Culver City? It's a little town adjacent to Los Angeles. And the studio that I rented, the, the building, an old warehouse, I rented from the sidekick of Jack Benny. Everything in Los Angeles has a show business uh, lineage. Uh, raise your hand if you've heard of the old-time comedian Jack Benny. Probably not too many, few people. Okay, well he's been dead for many, many years. But th I thought that was pretty cool. I moved to LA and I'm renting a building with the show business. Then I move, and the next place I move, I don't know who owns it, I don't care, until it comes time to sign the lease. And I'm signing the lease with Catwoman from Batman, Julie Newmar original Catwoman. She was a, a wonderful landlady and I rented a really neat a building from her. <clears throat> and then a number of years ago, uh, I bought uh, a really neat property up in uh, Hollywood. And it, it just fit me perfectly because it was a, a building, an uh, old home that I could live in and a studio that I could do all my studio photography in and so forth. And it just so happened that it was owned by the guy who produced Star Wars. So. No matter where you go in LA, it seems that something and everything has to do uh, with people, movies, and television. Um, this current studio is it's, it's very cool, and, and I talk about it a little bit in my book. Um, so let's talk about my website a little bit. You want to want me to explain some of the pictures on my website? So. So, my website contains uh, these pages. Let's see if we can stretch that out. All right, should be okay. Anyway, okay, so um, uh, David mentioned earlier basically what this says, and uh, there's my book, and I've been touring the country. Uh, with my book uh, for some time, and uh, has anybody here ever uh, written and published a book? Raise your hand if you've ever. I understand that no hands went up because let me tell you, it was the biggest project of my life. I'm very glad I did it. It took me uh, two years, uh, pretty much round the clock, working on it to do it. I had to edit from a quarter of a million photographs. That's approximately what I've shot in my career, a quarter of a million. It's a lot. Of my, my fingers very tired, um, and uh, and then of course you have to find a printer and you have to design it. And the most difficult part for me, because really I'm a photographer, visual person, um, was the writing. Because I wasn't just going to put out a book that said, you know, hope you like these pictures, and then there's just a book of pictures. There had to be interesting and engaging stories, and. Um, so it took me a long time to sit down with a legal pad, that's how I like to write longhand, and recall all these experiences I've had over decades with these uh, famous people. And then, of course, any good writer rewrites and rewrites and, and has friends read what they've written. I've got a lot of advice, uh, but eventually I, I got it done.